I couldn't. Because I don't think I have even fully come to terms with what I have experienced here. Um, I do want to ex express my gratitude for people coming together and believing that we could work together and build the new systems that we needed to to build the world that we wanted to. Um, I will look at my notes. In March, after um, after we took on this case, I spoke with my friend runs the restorative justice. Yeah. I'm concerned about Jason. My view. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, what I want to say is that I definitely have already left Occupy Nashville as of the beginning of April. And I came back here because I felt it was my responsibility to this group, to the restorative justice process that we had started to the people involved in it, to my own personal set of ethics, and to the vision that we had come together to build. And what's been very painful, not just over the past two months, but since January, is realizing not only that I personally was failing in that, and that we were failing in that, and that, that that might not be possible, but also that I was putting myself in a position where I was participating in abusive and oppressive relationships, and that was also painful because I had built up a perception of myself as a person who didn't do that anymore. I think I could open my eyes now. Okay. In March, when we took when we took this case upon ourselves, I spoke with my friend who runs a restorative justice program in Brooklyn. And she said this is not the sort of case that can be brought before restorative justice because the people that are involved in it don't all want to come to the table. The thing that you can do at this point is bring people together, have them talk about their hurt and have those acknowledged. And then see if there's any possible way for us to move forward as a group, having acknowledged those harms and trying to build something that holds each other accountable for those. We never were able to do that. And I view that both as a personal failure and a failure of the group. And it breaks my heart. When TJ and I, at the end of May, finally said, we have to bring this to some sort of closure, we sat down in Waffle House and we ate a big bowl of whipped cream, and, <laughs> which is about, and Dorsey, I apologize because I think that that was probably the only pleasurable thing about this whole process, and I wish you could have been there so you could have eaten whipped cream with us. But we said, we had come there knowing that we had four goals. One was to give an update on what the process had been like, and to acknowledge its failures and its limitations. The second thing was to make good on requests that had come forward through the process, and especially through a circle discussion. The third thing was to point out our perception of what had happened. And the fourth thing was to start a conversation. To say, we think that there should be conversations about the way that people have been deeply traumatized and abused within this situation, and how we could move forward from that. And then we thought about it and we said, those four goals are necessary but not sufficient. The other thing that we have to be able to do is to give hope, to listen, and to learn. And those three things actually I think are the most important things 
and I think, once again, I feel like we've failed. I don't think that we've listened tonight. I don't necessarily even think that we've learned. And I am in a position where I have, where actually hope is one of the chief qualities that I have as a person, and I'm finding it very difficult to find any hope in the situation. So I just once again want to say how grateful I am to all of you and how deeply sad I am that we are struggling together and not finding a clear way forward. And I want to offer the hope that we can do that, but I am unsure. So that's what I have to say, and thanks for listening to me. And sorry. Thanks, <laughs>